Hi, it's Ben again. Welcome to uh, this video. Uh, today we're going to be taking apart a couple of cars that were in my previous video. One I said had locking, that would be this one on the left, and the other one I said did not, the one on the right. Fairly obvious by process of elimination. Anyway, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm just going to be deconstructing them, showing you how they were locked, because I didn't go into this in the last video, and I think it's something that I probably should do. So, we're just going to do that now. We're starting with the one without locking. Actually, before we start, minifigures do not fit into here. So, see, my guy does not... The roof just pops off. Uh, he does fit into the other one because I used a standard Lego chassis. Here I'll show you. See, he should should be able to fit on. Oops. Sorry, that was might have been a little bit too high, but see, he fits in there. Whoops. Anyway, on to the dissection. So, the roof like this is supposed to just pop off if you're going to have a really playable car. Then, uh, the windshields, there's no really... In my opinion, there's no spectacular way to lock them on on a small car like this uh, if you're using one on both side. sides. Then the this curved pieces just pop right off, as they should. This is actually fairly stable, uh, the front bumpers and grills and the rear one too. These are relatively stable. They were meant to just explode off when I dropped it. Yes, I did build this with the intention of it exploding. So, most models probably won't be as bad. The, uh, this is the same on both sides. I built it, like, 95% symmetrical. So, it's exactly the same on both sides. Um, on small cars, there's also no really great way to lock these on, the axles. It's possible to do it, but I didn't do it here, because I didn't want to. Because, you know, I'm trying to make a big explosion. The wheel wells are separate entities. Normally these would be held together generally by a 2x4 plate in place of where I have the two 2x2s. Two That's a lot of twos. Then, yeah, those pop off. We have the... Whoop, we have 1x6 reverse plates. Uh, reverse, not plates, sorry. Reverse slopes. And I'm not sure what this plate is called. I think it's like an angle plate or something. And those just pop off. They're going to probably stay together, but they pop off. Then we have these, which are plates for some weird reason. I'm not sure why I made them plates, but I did. And now we're down to the chassis, which is a couple 2x6s, a couple 1x2s, a couple... Uh, one by fours and a couple two by fours, uh, designed very specifically to split apart into pieces when it hits the ground, and really when any pressure hits it. All right, so that was the one I really designed to explode. Like I said earlier, uh, most models are not going to be that terrible. That was intentionally made to be extraordinarily bad. Just so you know. Now. On to the second car. So the roof is supposed to pop up, pop up, pop, uh, the roof is supposed to pop off as one unit, but uh, it doesn't always work because there's no uh, stabilizing lock. There's no lock up here, which is where it would be. Of course, it's kind of hard to get that with those two pieces. I mean, you could do it with a one, but the other one doesn't work so well. Then, uh, I actually use the windshields here to, I'm not sure, you can see that, okay. There's two 2x3 plates here. 
and I use that to lock them together because they aren't really connected in any other way. So those are stuck on, uh, stuck together due to this. So I use that to lock them. Then uh, these hold both hold the plates down and hold this piece on. But the decorations on this don't really have locking. But this is a relatively this is a piece that holds on to pieces on it fairly well. Now, I'm going to use a Lego separator on this. If you don't have a Lego separator, I highly recommend you get one. They are extraordinarily useful, and your fingers will thank you for getting them, and your fingernails too. So, again, I didn't lock these onto the bottom because it's uh, difficult, impractical, and sometimes it makes it very hard for the car to actually roll about. No really good way to lock these on without royally messing up your model. And now that we're down to the core, basically, the chassis, these just pop right off. And if you're wondering why I use these uh, curved pieces here, I genuinely have no idea. But I did. I think this was originally actually a brick built chassis, so that's why I did it. It helped lock it together further, but then I switched to the official Lego chassis because it's just simpler. Then you can pull these out, but it takes a bit of force and rips that area apart, so you can just send those pieces flying. And yeah, that's basically it. So I hope you could see how these were locked together or not locked together in the case of the other car. Uh, I hope you can also see how thoroughly useful a Lego separator is. Um, also, only about, like, I think 18% of you who watched my last video subscribed, so if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always unsubscribe with just another two clicks of the button. Now, anyway, have a great day, and keep on building.